The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We gather as Pennington Presbyterian Church. This is a special day today. It is World Communion Sunday. It's a time to highlight our connection with the body of Christ nearby and across the world. For those of you who are worshiping at 1015 Eastern Time, now is the moment to gather some bread and juice or wine so that you'll be able to participate in the sacrament with us this morning, part of our communion as World Communion Sunday. This is also a special day. We are celebrating the prayer initiative that we began five years ago on World Communion Sunday to pray for every country and group of people in the whole world, one week at a time, alphabetically. So this is a great day to celebrate that, a great way to remember that praying is a way to love our neighbors. Each World Communion Sunday, first Sunday of October, Presbyterians across our country participate in the peacemaking offering. This is an offering, part of it goes to our national church, part of it to our regional presbytery, and then 25% we get to keep for our own designation. The worldwide gifts, the national gifts, go to support the self-development of people and other peacemaking and justice initiatives of our church. And the 25% that we've designated this time will go toward the Hopewell Valley Mobile Food Pantry, which is helping neighbors who are in particular need right now because of COVID-19 downturn in the economy. So if you want to participate, please write peacemaking offering on your check that you mail to the church, or if you go online and make an online donation, there is a place in the memo where you can put peacemaking offering there. Every first Sunday of the month at 1130, after we've had a time to worship together and have communion, we have our Zoom coffee hour. I hope that you will grab a cup of coffee, maybe a cookie. The link for the uh, coffee hour Zoom was sent to you by email right along with the link for this worship service. We are in the midst of our fall stewardship campaign. This year our theme is we are one in the spirit based on that wonderful hymn. We're going to continue for the next couple of weeks to think together about our stewardship as we make plans for our ministry in 2021. Pledge Sunday is October 18th. Be on the lookout in the mail for a letter that should have um, arrived this last week, and then you'll receive something more this week with a pledge card and instructions on different ways that you can make your pledge this year. Thank you so much for praying and for thinking about how you can be part of our wonderful ministry. I'm thrilled to share the news that Pennington Presbyterian Church Nursery School is going to open tomorrow. We have worked hard. Hope Anderson worked tirelessly with her team of teachers to go along with all of the state mandates about safety, new protocols, and all of that is in place and will be ready to go tomorrow. So please keep Hope and all those students and the children, their families, and the um, staff, the teachers in your prayers. Because of the coronavirus, we're not able to have visitors come and see the nursery school in action, but your hopes and your prayers and your thoughts and even notes of support are greatly appreciated. One more note about today. Some parts were pre-recorded and filmed back on Wednesday, and that was prior to the time when we learned that President and First Lady Trump came down with coronavirus. And so know that we all lift up together those who are suffering, and that includes Donald and Melania Trump. Our liturgists this morning are Casey Aldridge, Matt Heisler, Sarah Gregg, Catherine Ahmed, David Anderson, Anna McCoskey, Megan Coyley, Susan Dancer, Nancy Cho, and Catherine Schumacher. Let us now worship God. For God so loved the world. Ahibu el alam. Eme le monde. That he gave his only son. Yasua. Jesus. 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Al Hayat al Abadia, la vie éternelle. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Thanks be to God. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is Praise God, All You Nations, which is hymn number 328 in the Glory to God hymnal. In spite of God's great love for us, we often act in ways that are harmful to ourselves and to our friends and neighbors, both near and far. Let us confess our sins with honesty and with faith in God's promise to forgive. Let us pray. God of every people and nation, we confess that we have not lived as global citizens in your new realm of justice and peace. We build up dividing walls in the world. We ignore the suffering in distant nations and live in fear of our neighbors. We fail to take action when we have the opportunity to make a difference for the good of others. Forgive us, God of grace, for self-centeredness and for our lack of vision and compassion. Pour out your spirit of peace upon us and break down the dividing walls among us so that we might learn to love our neighbors those next door, and those oceans away. And hear us now as we offer our silent prayers of confession to you now. Amen. Hear the good news. Die gute Nachricht hören. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you for your great love for us and for the world. 
We know that you gave your only Son in your love for us. Help us to love others the way you have loved us. Teach us to pray for our neighbors next door and our neighbors thousands of miles away. Amen. God, we thank you for your great love for us and for the world. We know that you gave your only Son in your love for us. Help us to love others the way you have loved us. Teach us to pray for our neighbors next door and our neighbors thousands of miles away. Amen. As we prepare to hear scripture read and the word proclaimed, let us seek illumination from God. Let us pray. Loving God, there are so many words, so many voices in our lives. Silence all the voices that would distract us and help us to be open and listen with attentiveness to your word. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of 1 John, that little tiny epistle near the end of the Bible, reading chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and then 23 and 24. Listen for a word of God. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, that when he is revealed, we will be like him. We will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the great joys of being a pastor is to preside over the sacraments. It's a great joy today to be able to share leadership at the Lord's table with Casey as a newly ordained minister of word and sacrament. The sacrament of baptism, though celebrated more infrequently in our church, is another joyous celebration. And if you've been in our congregation, when a baptism is taking place, you might recall having heard some of the words that I just read from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has for us, that we should be called children of God, and that's what we are. About a year ago, this time in the fall, I had the privilege, the honor, and the joy of baptizing Tanner Walton. After the baptism with water and the anointing with the Holy Spirit, with uh, oil, I said those very words from scripture, see what love the Father has for us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Tanner is not only the beloved child of Casey and Luke, Tanner is the beloved child of our congregation, and we have made vows in baptism to raise him to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. But Tanner is also a beloved child of God, Scholars believe that these opening words from the 1 John chapter 3 belong to some of the earliest Christian liturgies for baptism. That's amazing. We're given a window into the thoughts and the worship practices of our ancestors in the faith, what they knew and what they believed to be true and what they proclaimed in their lives and in their sacraments. We are God's children now. We aren't mere creatures, one among billions, nameless or faceless or just a blob of DNA, a statistic. We are God's children. We aren't hired hands, employees working for the big boss. 
dispensable, interchangeable, replaceable. No, we are God's beloved children living with God and with God's family, working together as a big family on a common project, focused on a common goal set forth for us by God. And we eat and we drink together at one big family table. We are God's children now. And 1 John sums up our calling as the children of God in chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. We are to believe in Jesus Christ and to love one another. Believing and loving, loving and believing, that will change the world. Today we will add a second verse as we sing our stewardship hymn, We Are One in the Spirit. Last week we sang, we're one in the Spirit, we're one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored. The focus was on our unity, our koinonia fellowship that we have with Jesus Christ and with each other. Today we will add verse 2 and we will sing, we will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. Well, we won't actually walk hand in hand during COVID, but metaphorically, our calling is to walk hand in hand. We walk together as God's children, as God's family. We walk and we work together as siblings to help each one grow in our understanding and our faith and our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's not a short little dash. That is a long trek over a lifetime. And we do it together because you have things to teach me and I have things to share with you. I'm so grateful for all who have a very intentional commitment to this part of our life together, though it's one for everybody. But I have a great appreciation for those of you who are intentionally week by week, walking with each other as Sunday school teachers, as small group participants or leaders, and in our youth groups. Thank you. This sharing that we have in helping each other to develop and grow in our faith in Jesus Christ, it happens across the generations. Back in August, I stood in a cemetery in Ringo's with the family of Grace Sheets. Back in August, we were together in that place. Grace lived to be 105 years old. At the time of her death, she was living with her daughter out near Pittsburgh, but she was definitely part of our church family. Her son, Dick, gave a eulogy in which he included all of the pandemics and the health struggles and the wars and the economic downturns, all of the challenges that Grace, his mom, had experienced in her 105 years of life. And he noted that it is her faith in Jesus Christ that kept her going in the good times and in the bad times. That faith bubbled up in Grace, and all of us who had the privilege and the joy of knowing Grace knew of her faith in Jesus Christ and how she loved to share that with us. At the other end of the age spectrum, our children and our teenagers, they have so much to teach us that will build up our faith too. They inspire us to be courageous, to be loving, and to be just. All of us, children of God of every age in God's family, we walk together so that we can have a witness that God is alive and that God is love. Now our, our scripture and our hymn this morning present challenges for us. And I want to just briefly highlight, highlight three of those. First, we're challenged to walk with each other instead of alone. Sometimes it's easier to walk alone. We don't want to have to accommodate ourselves to anybody else. But as God's child, please remember you're not an only child. 
The family is big and it's built on our relationships with God and with each other. You matter. You matter to all of us. A second challenge is to not become complacent or lukewarm. Like sometimes happens in our family, there's that pile of recycling that needs to go out back to be taken out, but nobody really wants to do that. We all become a little complacent about the mess that's forming and we just think, oh, I can cram one more thing in the bag and somebody else will take it out because I don't really feel like doing that. Well, sometimes in the family of God, this complacency, this letting down of intentionality might sound more like, I'm good, I don't need that church stuff. Or, it won't really matter if I don't worship. I'm busy with other things. Or, someone else will sing or teach church school. Someone else will gather food for hungry people in our community. Someone else will look for ways for us to make a difference in our community, to seek justice around us. Someone else will check on our shut-ins. Someone else will lead and serve as deacons and elders. Someone else will pledge and give to support our ministry. I just don't feel like it. But our calling is to walk together, to walk together, to grow in our faith in Jesus Christ and to grow in our love of one another and of our world. But our culture encourages us to do it alone, to easily stagnate in our faith, to be lukewarm about our faith in Jesus Christ and our commitment and our responsibilities that we have to each other. The third challenge I see here is to walk with each other in the life of our church and out in the world in ways that truly convey Christ's love They'll know we are Christians by our love. Unfortunately, sometimes when the public sees Christians, they don't see love. They see us as hate-filled or prejudiced or hypocrites or bigots. And that hurts. I don't want people to think of me as a Christian like that. It hurts our impact, too, because it sets up obstacles and hurdles for people of no faith or people with very young faith to really believe in Jesus Christ when Christians do things in the public life that don't really reflect the love of God. It hurts us. It divides us. And I believe it hurts God, too, because God is love. These challenges to walk together and not alone, to be committed and not complacent or lukewarm in our faith, and to shine forth love the way God intends in the world. Those are hard things to do, but that's what God has called us to, and God is a loving parent, and so God provides for us, provides for us in baptism as we're covered by grace and forgiven and challenged to live out our life of discipleship forever. And in the Lord's Supper, where we are joined together with Christ and with each other and with all those who share the feast in this world, across this globe, and even from times gone by, we are together at one big family table. We are fed by the sustaining grace of God so that we are empowered to believe in Jesus Christ, and to love and to love well. We get to walk with each other. That's what we're going to be doing together as a congregation in 2021. I hope that you will continue to grow and to love and to walk with us. Amen. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. 
And we pray that all unity may one day be restored And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love Good morning, I'm Sarah Gregg, and one of the storytellers in our Godly Play program that we have here at church. We use Godly Play with our children in preschool through fourth grade. And today, our lesson took place in the desert. So we have a little piece of the desert with us today. We've had three lessons so far. We're using Zoom, and it's really a joy to have be with the children again and see their faces as we're, we're working together. So today, our story is about God's giving us the 10 best ways. And I've taught Sunday school and different age levels for about 30 years. But what I'm finding is that using these beautiful wooden materials and hearing the stories and seeing them as they play out actually bring new meaning to these old familiar stories. And I'm always awed by the comments that the children have at the end of our story during our wondering time. Yes, wondering. Wondering is a part of the godly play program. And we wonder together. And wonder what part of the story was the most important. And wonder what we could leave out and still have all the story we need. I wonder where we see ourselves in the story. I think these wondering questions and wondering ideas is something that's a spiritual practice that we should all be doing. I wonder where we hear God's call in our own lives. I wonder where you see that you'd like to be more involved. Soon, we are going to be receiving information about the financial campaign for 2021. And I'm hoping that you will join with me and make a pledge so we can gather our resources together and move forward serving Christ in this community and expanding our programs for our children. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. We thank God for all of God's good gifts to us and for calling us into fellowship with God and with each other. Our offering is one way that we love each other and love the larger world around us. Today, we will also be receiving the peacemaking offering. These gifts help make tangible our commitment to peace and justice and compassion for all of God's children, including our hungry friends and neighbors in the Hopewell Valley. While we are in quarantine, there are two simple ways to give your financial offerings. First, you can mail a check to the church. Or secondly, you can go to our website and use the Donate Now button. It is simple, secure, and fast. Please be sure to note the peacemaking offering on the special gifts note. While we aren't together at the church or can't all be together in the sanctuary just yet, we continue to be the church and have important ministry to support. Thank you for continuing to give. May God bless and use these gifts. This morning, it is a joy to celebrate our initiative of praying for all the people of the world, one country at a time, each week. The initiative started on World Communion Sunday in 2015. Because there's more than 200 countries, 
We didn't finish until Easter time of this year in 2020. Over the, the years, we had a team of researchers who printed up materials for us so that we could know about each country, some very familiar to us and others brand new. We learned so much about the joys and the beauty of their lives and also the heartaches and the struggles. We were encouraged each week to remember not to just pray for our own lives and our families and those closest to us, but all of God's children everywhere. There were themes that reappeared over the four and a half years. Struggles with the environment. Struggles with poverty and with corruption in governments. War. The high cost of human trafficking and drug trafficking, just um, to name a few. But we also got a window into the beauty and into the ways people care for each other and celebrate in their lives. So now more than ever, in this time of pandemic, we realize our world is smaller than we thought. We continue to pray, praying for our world, for each and every human being is made in the image of God, worthy of love and dignity. We couldn't have done this without a wonderful team of volunteers, and I just want to name them for you now. So a big thank you to Frank Newport, Corinne Orlando, Ron Russell, Beth Sarsfield, Mary Schultz, Barbara Sargent, Jane Simpson, Ava Sapo, and Heath Trainer. Thanks to all of you for helping us and congratulations for this trip around the world and may we continue to pray for all people everywhere. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Holy God, creator of the whole world, with joy we offer you our thanks and praise. You made us in your image to live with one another in love. You gave us freedom to choose your way. Even when we have been unfaithful to you, you have been faithful to us. We praise you, most holy God, for sending your only son, Jesus, to live among us, sharing our joys and our sorrows. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Faithful to the end, he died on the cross and was raised to new life so that we might receive your gift of new life. Send us out in the power of the Spirit to walk with each other, to love one another, to share the good news of the gospel, and to work for justice and peace for all. Lord, we lift before you now the joys and the concerns of our community, our country, and our world. We pray for those in need of your healing touch, for Don Trisman who fell and broke his hip, for Edna Stout, who is home recovering from surgery, for those undergoing treatment for cancer, for those who are depressed, those plagued by migraines, for those with chronic illnesses, and those with memory loss. And Lord, we lift up President and First Lady Trump and all who are sick, Lord, here in the United States and around the world with COVID-19. We pray for your healing mercies for all who are in need today. God, we pray for our country. Our hearts go out to those whose homes and communities have been devastated by fires and for those who continue to battle the fires in dangerous circumstances. We pray for those whose businesses have been upended because of COVID-19 and for those who feel unsafe at work. We thank you for those who are showing creativity and flexibility and patience as they learn new ways to do things. God, we also cry out to you on behalf of those who bear the scars of prejudice and hatred, of systems that are unjust. Teach us, God, how to love one another in our public life, how to seek the good for others, to work for justice, and to protect the most vulnerable in our country. We pray, Lord, for our elected leaders close to home, in our state, and in our national government. And God, lest we forget what we have learned over these last five years, we pray for our world, especially for those with the greatest needs, for those who are poor or oppressed, for those who are in danger right now, we pray too for the land and sea and sky and for all of your creatures. We pray for countries we consider our friends and for those we might call our enemies. Lord, may everyone have daily bread and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hear these prayers, O God, and all the prayers of our hearts as we unite in the prayer of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is, This is My Song. It's in Glory to God, number 340.
Beloved children of God, take joy in who you are and go forth with faith in Jesus Christ and great love to share with our world. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and upon this whole world that God loves now and forever. Amen.